Another blood red sunset and yet another moon face and still another hundred miles to my next resting place. Driving down the road, eyes on the horizon. Within my car, I'm all alone. But feeling good and feeling strong, knowing that this path I'm on brings me to myself. I'm driving. Hey now all, I'm Joey C. Welcome back to another episode of Spirit Sherpa. This is the show that helps and encourages you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo. With me as always is the spirit doctor, Kelly Sparta. Hey Kelly. Hey Joey. What's happening? Well, my dog's barking in the backyard for some reason. I haven't figured out why. That's what dogs do. He's just talking to a squirrel. Yeah, he's not supposed to be out there, though. I'm not sure how he got out there. <laughs> he also learned how to turn doorknobs. Yeah, it's a heavy slider. <laughs> sure Even easier. There. Yeah, <laughs> probably, probably. Yeah. So anyway, there that's you what go. You, yeah, if you hear him in the background, that's what you're hearing. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So you got the vaccine. I did get the vaccine yesterday. I got the first shot. Um, go you. I, yeah, uh, I'm I'm happy to have it, but I'm not happy with how I'm feeling right now. So well, <laughs> for those for those listening, if you if you're like, what is wrong with Joey today? That is what was wrong with Joey today. So so we're pushing through, though, because it's spirit. Sherpa. There's no there's no slowdown. We just keep going. <laughs> there's no crying in baseball and there's no slowing down on spirit Sherpa. <laughs> exactly. Podcasting goes whether you're sick or not and you just put on a smile and it's time. It's time. Go. Yep. I got my vaccine a few months ago. So both, Excellent. Both, I'm, I'm fully done. So oh. for those of you out there who haven't been vaccinated yet, go get your vaccine. Yeah. Do it, not contribute to to not having herd immunity. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kill those variants. Kill those variants. Kill those variants. What? 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 Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's going to be like that. Yeah. Today, it's going to be like that today. Oh, my goodness gracious. Well, buckle up, people. Here we go. <laughs> Speaking of here we go, we are continuing down the chakra system today and we are moving into chakra four. Yes. The heart what chakra. is that? The heart chakra. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, eh, not an important one at all. No. no. <laughs> it's just a yiddle yiddle one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so here's the thing. In the chakra system, the third and fourth chakras are the center point, right? They, well, the fourth chakra itself is the center point of seven chakras, right? And the third and fourth chakras are intimately connected. So uh, when you listen to this one, you're going to want to definitely listen to the one that comes after this one, the, the third chakra, because they really interrelate a lot. When we're looking at the fourth chakra, a lot of what is happening here, and again, I'm, I'm speaking to, to those of us who come from the challenged childhood, right? So, you know, there are some common blocks that we find in this chakra. Um, but in general, the chakra does what you would expect it to do. It's, it's how we give and receive love. It's where we experience things like grief and betrayal and joy actually blossoms in the fourth chakra. And so it's actually birthed in the second chakra as passion. And then it goes through the third chakra into I deserve this and up into the heart chakra and it becomes joy. And so you have to be clear in all three chakras in order for you to experience joy. Okay, that's where joy comes from. You don't have to be completely clear, but you have to be clear in those sections of those chakras in order for that to work. You have to have clearness in all three pieces, right, in order to experience joy. And so the the heart chakra is not a great mystery, but there are some pieces of it that are kind of aha moments. You know, the first thing that I typically see in people who come from challenged childhoods is that we armor our hearts. You'll know you have an armored heart if you try to feel love and it just sort of feels like nothing. Okay. Um, another symptom is that you manage your emotions with your head instead of feeling them in your heart. 
Okay. That's another symptom of having an armored heart. A- another piece is that the only real strong emotions you feel are anger and fear because that's what's on the outside of the armor. <laughs> that's, that's the armor. The armor is anger and fear. And so if, if those are true for you, then you're probably living with an armored heart. Okay. And what that means is that what happens is when you have emotions, they get stuffed inside the armor to pad the heart. And so they're like all the wadding around the the heart there. And so when you remove armoring from an armored heart, all these random emotions come flying out. Things that have been stuffed for years, decades, you know, and you're just like, wow, I'm really sad. I don't know why I'm really sad, but I'm really sad. It's like, don't try and figure out why you're really sad. You're really sad because, you know, 15 years ago when you stuffed that emotion, you were really sad and it's not relevant today, right? Just feel sad and let it go, right? So this is one of those things when you're, when you're working on armored heart and heart issues, this is one of the things that shows up and people like, they're like, oh my God, I'm schizophrenic. <laughs> Like, I'm happy, I'm sad, I'm up, I'm down, I don't know where this is coming from. It's all random. It's like, yes, this is all the stuff you didn't feel. It's okay, just let it go. So there is this uh, tendency when you have an armored heart, uh, because you're locking everything out with the idea that you won't get hurt. By the way, it doesn't work. Okay. We, we armor up our hearts because we think we're protecting ourselves. But it, in actuality, all we're doing is amplifying the process of feeling isolated and alone. Okay. It doesn't actually work to keep us from being, being hurt. It just keeps other people from knowing that we've been hurt. That's the only thing it does. And in some homes, that's important. Right. When you have somebody in your house who will take anything that any way they see that they've hurt you and just amplify it, then not showing that you're hurt is a super valuable skill. Right. But for the rest of us, you know, it just isn't it feels like it's going to help and yet it doesn't. So these are things to consider when we have an armored heart. We also suck at receiving. Okay. Now this is going to, going to play out in a bunch of different ways, but obviously we suck at receiving love. But for many of us, we may have conflated love and money. We've, you know, smushed them together and made them the same thing. And if you're having a hard time receiving love, you won't have an easy time receiving money either. Okay. So, you know, you either have to pull them apart or you have to de-armor the heart and let the love in so that the money can come to, right? Okay. And when you don't receive, and I'm going to give you a little preview of the next one here because it's relevant in this one. Uh, remember I said second and or, uh, third and fourth chakras are really related, right? So when you don't receive love on a regular basis, your inner child, your subconscious mind says, well, I'm not receiving love. Therefore, I must not be lovable. And it creates a not lovable story in the third chakra. It is not because you're not lovable. It is because you're not receiving love. And so there's that piece. Some of the other patterns that we can see in this chakra are transactional love. I'll give you this much love if you give me that much love, right? We're, we're keeping score. We're trading. By the way, keeping score is the best way to kill a relationship, just for the record. Uh, another piece that's related is love comes with an obligation. I love you. Therefore you owe me this. I've done this nice thing for you. Therefore you owe me that. And for people who don't want to accept the obligation, they often just shut down the love. If I don't receive the love, I don't have to receive the obligation. And that's right there in the same vein as keeping score. It's that same sort of conditional element. Exactly. And so when you have had that experience of love comes with an obligation, you're like, well, mm, never mind. It never occurs to you that you can receive the love and shun the obligation. 
okay, and say, no, I deserve this love. I'm taking it. Thank you. Oh, no, I don't have to do anything for it. I'm amazing just as I am. Thank you. Right. And that's how that goes. So another piece that shows up here is betrayal. Okay. This is a big one, especially when parents are less than who we wanted them to be. That's the the primary betrayal, right? Is my parents were not the loving parents that, that I was told I was supposed to be able to expect. Right. And the thing is, Betrayal is a funny thing. And here's your aha moment, okay? Betrayal is a funny thing because what it says is that I expected you to be this person and you were someone else, okay? The problem is most of the time, 99% of the time, the person was very clear about who they were and we were just demanding that they be someone different, Okay, so betrayal isn't actually betrayal so much as it is a refusal to accept who the person is that you're interacting with. Because when you accept who they are and you're like, oh, yeah, look, that's who you are. Right. Then you expect this behavior and there's no betrayal. Okay, it's when we want someone to be someone other than who they are that we have problems. And for those of you out there in relationships right now where you're like, oh, well, you know, this person will get better, right? They're, they're, I can see the potential in them. Unless they want to get better, they are not going to get better. Let me be clear with you. Unless you have actually seen forward progress out of this person and heard them say, I want to get better at a time when you're not demanding that they say it, they're not going to. And, and they need to say, I want to get better for me, not for you, not for this, not for that person, for me. Exactly. And if if this is not something they've been doing, it's unlikely to become something that they are doing. Okay. Because it's... It's a very rare thing that people just suddenly decide to grow. Okay. So stop lying to yourself and find somebody who is going to be worthy of you. Right. Okay. So marching orders for some people out there. I can feel it. They're going, oh crap. Right. If that's you, if you just went, oh crap, I'm talking to you. Okay. The next one is grief. And this is, this is really the, the big one, right? And the reason it's a big one is not just for the reasons that you would imagine, which is, you know, oh, someone's died and I've lost them and I'm sad or, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, whatever. Uh, but, and, and, you know, grief also shows up if you're divorced, right? You have to grieve the dream of the relationship that could have been. Every time you get divorced, every time you have a, a relationship, a significant relationship that dies, it, you're grieving the dream of what it could have been. And so there is a grief process there that has to be engaged, even if you're happy about the divorce, even if you're like, yes, this was my idea. I'm out. I'm done. We go me. Right. Even if you also have to make sure that you are grieving the dream. Now, all of this is well and fine. You, you have to feel the emotions in order to let them go. And so there's that. And if you have an armored heart, this is what you talked about before. You're not feeling those emotions. So you're not processing them in the moment. That's where those situations come up that you process them 13 years later. It's like, whoa, where is this coming from? Go figure. Yeah. yeah. Um, but there's another piece that, that I, I really haven't heard anybody else talk about. And it's something that all my clients experience as they go through this de-armoring process um, and, and through the process of finally letting love in, in, in their lives. And what that is, is that if every time you let yourself feel loved, you cry, that's actually some grief coming out from all the love you didn't receive. Okay, so we don't armor our hearts until they become filled with grief when the grief is so 
full in our hearts that we can't hold anymore, that's when we armor them. And so when we finally let ourselves feel loved, the love squeezes out some grief each time you let it in. And that's why you cry. Okay. It is not something that continues forever. Okay. For me, it took about two or three years for the tears to stop coming when I allowed myself to feel loved. But after that point, I don't cry anymore when I feel loved. Okay. And that's because I finally processed all of that grief that was locked in the heart. Okay. So this is, this is a significant piece of the work. And I know there's a lot of people who are experiencing grief um, when they're experiencing love and they get confused by that. They're like, why, why am I crying? You know, it's, it's you know, they, or they think it's normal to cry when you feel loved. And I just want to be clear that that's what this is. Okay. So, you know, having blocks in the heart chakra obviously limits your ability to connect. It will create issues around intimacy because into me, you see, well, if I don't share my emotions with you, then you're not actually seeing me, are you? Right. Um, it's going to create problems in connecting with others. It's going to create issues around worthiness because if you don't feel lovable, you certainly don't feel worthy. Right. The lovability issue is there. Um, and then, you know, there's just the, the, the sheer fact of it's, you can't feel loved. Right. So you feel constantly needy in relationship. You feel like you're always on edge going, am I okay? Am I not okay? Is, is my partner happy with me? Are they not happy with me? If even if they're neutral with you, you're like, Oh my God, am I all right? Is it okay? I have to ask, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? What are you thinking? What are you thinking? Wah. Right. There's that energy that comes up, that panic and the fear of abandonment that comes through from that. And this is a significant chakra for that reason, right? So, you know, how do we fix it? You know, the short answer is you've got to de-armor the heart, right? That means you have oh, to practice Oh, that's the easy receiving. part. Yeah, go figure. <laughs> that's that's, that's the easy part, right? I didn't say it was easy. <laughs> I just said it was short. Yeah. That was a short answer, not the easy one. There is no easy answer. Uh, you know, the, the de-armoring of the heart is is its own process and and it is not insignificant right but a, a start is to start receiving right to allow yourself to receive compliments that's a good soft start and it's surprisingly difficult for a lot of people i mean that seems like it's like oh you just say thank you and be on your way but that's painful and for some of us to to take a compliment yeah, it's, it, I actually do an entire like hour and a half long workshop on compliments and how people throw them away and all that other stuff. It's, it's really funny. But, um, you know, I mean, people will hot potato it back. It's like, Oh, I love that dress. Thanks. I love your shirt. I can't hold it here. Let me throw it back at you. But there's, there's a whole series of ways in which people do that. And, and so, you know, just start with breathe it in and say thank you. Right. Be like, oh, thanks. Don't deny it. Don't go, oh, no, you don't need me. Or, oh, no, that's not true. Or, oh, this thing? I, you know, oh, you love this shirt? I paid five bucks for it, you know? Oh, I've never really liked it, you know? Whatever. We you're do the only it. one who thinks that. that right. Kind of <laughs> you're the only one who thinks that, or you're just saying that to be nice, right? Or what do you want? I love that one. The what do you want? You're manipulating me, right? You know, it's like, no, I just wanted to say something nice. <laughs> just really like the shirt, you know, really wasn't anything else. Right. Um, and, and the problem is, is that when you have these blocks and when you can't even accept a simple compliment, right? The people who have open hearts, who have open flowing love feel rebuffed. Right. Because you are rebuffing them. You're going, oh, no, no, no. You don't get to love me. 
and and we're like um why <laughs> and you're like no 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 i'm not lovable don't don't love me go away and i'm like okay right because i'm i'm going to honor your boundaries because that's what a healthy person does <laughs> You know, I honor your boundaries. Okay. Your boundary is you're not, not willing to be loved and I have love to give. Well, I will find a place where my love will be received. Right. And having been someone who loves people, because all of you are big lovers, you give out love like no tomorrow. You got massive hearts and, and you, you will give away love until you got nothing left. Okay. Imagine what it's like because you've had this experience to try to give love to someone who's unwilling to receive it. It sucks. And here we are in this, this conversation about giving and receiving, right? This, this stupidity of it's better to give than to receive. It's like, seriously, it is a binary process. One cannot exist without the other. How can you possibly say one is better than the other? Right? Well, they're not, but we, that's the story we get all the time. And so the upshot is that when you open your heart, you draw people to you who also have open hearts and this beautiful thing emerges. Now, let me say this. When you open your heart, you want to be careful who you do it with. You want to make sure that you're doing it with someone who is worthy of your vulnerability, who is safe with your vulnerability, right? Because we all have had people in our lives who are not safe with our vulnerability because the vulnerability or the transparency is so delicate. When you start this process, you definitely want somebody who is trustworthy with it. Okay, so be very careful about your discernment about who you do this work with. Okay, but when you open up with someone who is safe, what you discover is that there is a whole world of joy waiting. There's a whole world of love waiting. Here's the thing. When you don't accept the love that's coming towards you, it doesn't go away. It just sits in your energy field. And so when you finally open up to it, there's all this love just waiting for you in your energy field. And so it's this amazing thing when you can give yourself the permission to do it. Right? You know, this is why I tell people, you know, some of the hardest work in personal growth is the first few steps because they're the ones that scare the crap out of you, right? It's letting yourself be seen, letting yourself be vulnerable, letting yourself be loved. You know, these are, are some of the hardest things to do because they're the ones that have the greatest potential for pain. And we anticipate that the pain will be there because that has been our life experience. Because we anticipate that the pain will be there, we behave as though everyone around us is going to give us that pain. And therefore, we end up surrounded by the people who will fulfill that fantasy, right? Because that's what we're holding on to. And the people who will not do that don't appreciate being told that they will, right? And then you push them away. Exactly. Yeah. I once dated someone who asked me to promise that I would never hurt him. And I said, no one can promise that. I said, I could promise it, but I can't guarantee I'm not going to do it. I said, because I don't know where all your buttons are. You know, I could inadvertently smash a button tomorrow and not mean to, but hurt you nonetheless. You know, it's an unrealistic request. But he was like, well, if you can't promise, then I can't be with you. And I'm like, okay, well, that tells me who you are. Right. And, and it's fine. It kept him from being with somebody who was going to be honest with him about what was going on. Right. It's like, I can't say I won't hurt you. I just can't. So there are no guarantees in relationships, right? We can only intend to do well by the other person. 
and we can only do our best. And therefore, you can only expect that from the other person in return. And if you are demanding that the person promise that they will never hurt you, well, you know, you're, you're setting yourself up to be betrayed. Because of your expectations, not because of their actions. Exactly. And because, you know, your buttons are yours. And if they're not neatly labeled and carry on baggage, you know, then, then they're a minefield, right? It's like, oh, look, then I, I'm going to wander over here. Ah, I stepped on three buttons. Crap. <laughs> right? I didn't mean to, but there they were right in the middle of the floor, right? It's like, oops. So this is, this is the thing. And the heart is very delicate in some ways. So we feel like the heart is a very delicate thing because we've been hurt a lot. Okay. But in actuality, the heart is really strong and powerful because you're still loving, even though you've been hurt a lot. The interesting thing there is that when we armor our hearts, we're not necessarily doing well by it because what happens to something that is encased, it atrophies. And then, then the, the strength of it is not because of the hurt. It's because it's not been allowed to experience and feel and go through those emotional cycles, which are part of the wonderful things that is life. The happy, the sad, the good, the bad, all of that is what makes life wonderful. Damn, Joey, that was wise. <laughs> I have a moment here and there. It's the vaccine. It's the vaccine. It's... Take the compliment, dude. <laughs> I mean, thank you. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. So we've we've gone over a lot with this chakra. This was this was a very sort of uh, I don't want to say emotional one in the sense of uh it sounding too cliché here, but it really is filled with a lot of that emotional center of of our beings, both energetic and physical here. All right. Well, you talked about how do you fix it? What are some things here that you can tell people to do? You know, we've talked about some of them. If if love comes with an obligation, don't accept the obligation. Just accept the love, right? If love is a transaction, well, maybe you don't hang out with the person who makes it transactional, right? You know, or in, if they're family, well, there's that, right? No requirement to hang out with family either. So, the you know, and I just want to say this. if If your family is toxic, you are under no obligation to hang out with them. I just want to say that you, you do not have to damage yourself to continue a relationship with a toxic person. Okay. So have some, some sense of self preservation here, right? I'm, I'm encouraging you to prioritize your self preservation over the other person's desires, right? So let's just say that. But ultimately, what we're shooting for is self love. That's ultimately the goal, right? Because when you love yourself, then everything else falls into place. Okay. Now, for those of you out there whose brains just went, huh, what? When I said self-love, I totally get it. I really do. I want to be clear what self-love is and what it isn't. It is not self-esteem. Okay. Self-esteem is I can get myself out of bed in the morning and I can kick ass throughout my day. And if I, you know, if I have a high self-esteem, then I am competent and capable of getting things done and doing, doing things the right way. Right. I have high self-esteem. If I have self-love, it means that I am worthwhile and lovable when I am doing nothing just for being who I am, not for doing anything, just for being who I am right? That's what self-love is. And I know that a lot of your brains just went, huh, what? Again, and that's okay. I'm just defining it for you so that when you get to it, you can recognize it, right? So, there, and again, self-love is a process, right? I, it's it's such a process that, you know, I, I you have to finish your second course with me before you even get to it. And that's, you know, a year and four months in. So it, it is a, a process and it's complicated and that's okay. Okay. But ultimately it's about treating yourself as the beloved in your own life. Okay. Treating yourself the way you would treat someone who is truly 
someone you desperately love. Right. And so that's what we're, what we're shooting for in, uh, in a healed and open heart chakra. Well, this has been wonderful. And I think that everybody needs to take a little, a little bit of time here and process this through, allow your, your heart to process it through and really taking stock in whether or not you have that armored heart because there, it's time to release. It's time to allow yourself to love. You deserve to feel loved. Indeed. And to love others. Because like you said, you can't feel love. You can't experience love with other people and not just romantic love, but all kinds of love. My people are really good at giving love. They're just not very good at receiving it. <laughs> right? It's like you can love everyone and and give and give and martyr yourself on the altar of everyone else's happiness. But you're not actually experiencing unconditional love. What you're experiencing is the act of trying to prove to others that you're worthy of their love. Exactly. And that's that unconditional aspect. And that's where it really starts to flip the switch. Yeah. All right. How about a Kellyism to bring us out of our, our love fest here? Love is the answer. Simple and perfect. All right. That is all that we have for this week. But be sure to join us next time as Kelly adds another chapter into your guide to energy, magic, and the spirit world. I am Joey C., here with Kelly Sparta, and you have been listening to Spirit Sherpa. So long, everyone. Bye. Loving you and knowing you share with a condition. Each mile I travel over 13,000 now. Spirit Sherpa is the sole property of Kelly Sparta Enterprises and is distributed under a Creative Commons BY-NC-ND 4.0 license. For more information about this licensing, please go to www.creativecommons.org. Any requests for deviations to this licensing should be sent to kelly at kellysparta.com. To sign up for or get more information on the programs, offerings, and services referenced in this episode, please go to www.kellysparta.com. This episode of Spirit Sherpa has been produced by Honu Voice Productions with post-production by Christopher Wright. Into my home.